Uh, welcome back to the channel. We're here at the Steve Cook Stadium. It's like a second home for me and the boys now. And we've got... Can I call you a Premier League winner? Were you there? I was there, but I didn't... I weren't Premier League winner, nah. I was, I was, when I was there, there was Invincible 2003, 2004. Yeah. So we've got Ashley Proberts with us, former Arsenal player. I'd, from what I can tell, one of the strangest careers I've ever seen, but he's going to talk us through it and um, we'll hit you a few questions but first of all as i said we always ask who someone supports so who do you support arsenal is you not okay so you're an arsenal fan yeah, am, okay yeah. and uh, what's the reason is that through family or just uh, well i live like in bexley so my team is cholton or my family sport cholton but because i was at arsenal for so long i sort of got into that and i followed them from now and now just okay, so when did you get into Arsenal? Um, when I was about 13. Oh, so I you... I was all the way through okay. and got picked up at a Sunday league club, like my local team, Kingfisher, uh, scout, scouted me there. Went through to Arsenal and then stayed there all the way through. And then I went to the um, a school called Himes Park in Chingwell. Um, so you were a proper the, London boy then? Yeah, I went to school up there. I used to get picked up by a driver every morning. It was like an hour's drive to school. It was like an Arsenal school. Flipping Hetson. So I've um, done that for like obviously a normal school, about two years. And then I've done my scholarship and then I got a year pro. And when I got the year pro was the, the year then when Invincible was, oh. was with them. Do you know what so I mean? you were training with them? and Yeah, not not every single day because obviously the, the, it was a bit of a setup like this. You had two pitches. So the first team was on that pitch. We was next door. Um, every now and then we used to, in bits, like they used to say, right, four of us go over there go through stuff with them or actually do like keep ball and game situations so, so we was around you're a left back left back left midfield as well so like back then in that position at that point in time you had it's tough Ashley Cole yeah Cliche so Cliche yeah Cliche was his number two yeah Cliche. and then when Cole went to Chelsea then Cliche come in and I was just behind them I played like a couple of first team games oh. done alright but it was difficult I was going to say getting in ahead of Ashley Cole who what was yeah. Probably the best left back of the Premier League era. Yeah. But right. yeah, what was that like training with them though? Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, it's, yeah, Joe Burton, Silva. Yeah, so it was all there. Burkham, Omri, all of the Perez. top boys. Yeah. The Cesc there at the time. Cesc would come in. Yeah, we we were actually training like the reserves, and he come over just to join in. We was all like, oh, he's this new boy. I don't know. <laughs> I think <laughs> like that. I think Fabregas was about fifteen when he came in it. Yeah, so he was about 15, 16 when he came. He came over and he done like a kick ball with us, and we were like, "Fucking, he's alright, like he's decent." And yeah, then he came from Labasia, so he was with us for about two sessions, and he, he was straight on the first team pitch. Wow. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. But but know, what was that like though? Obviously, you're an Arsenal fan. You've been picked up by them, and you know you get to play. I mean, I mean, I, I dream to you know play for United mm. professionally. It's hard. It's hard to believe, but when when you're there every day with them, you sort of it's sort of like just coming in and meeting like normal people. Do you know what I mean? Like you see you're training with them, and you think you don't look at them like they're any better than you. But now you think back what they've done, and you think fucking how have I done that? Do you know what I mean? Right, was um, there ever a point in time where you like you'd look at Ashley and be like, you know what? One day I'm gonna get that left back yeah, spot off you. A little bit, yeah, but you, you just they used to turn up, just train like normal every day, and just do my thing, and I done all right and then I got loaned out to Rochdale yeah. um, and then from there how did that like, happen though because Arsenal's obviously this end of the country Rochdale's up there just, just um, that's what they do don't they wherever it is they don't care as long as you get game time I think it was um, Steve Bolv was my manager at uh, Arsenal and he was good friends with um, Steve Parkinson the Rochdale manager so he said I've got a young lad who wants to come down do you know what I mean so I went there and then done all right there yeah but just didn't 
enjoy that. So with Rochdale, did you play week in, week out and stuff? I played there yeah, for I was there for about seven months. I played mm-hmm. every every game, yeah. A couple I come on like so I was a bit injured or something like that, but mm-hmm. I was the number one. I play left midfield the there. Um, Not as a left back though. I play left midfield for Rochdale. But your actual position was left back. Left back, yeah. But I had a, an, it was an, an old boy who's been there for years, mm-hmm. like a proper non, like proper no like, messer, yeah, like so, so The changing like, position though, actually, it's like, h- how did you feel it? Because you come from Arsenal to Along to Rochdale. Um, no, I found it all right, really, because the the height, the quality that was at Arsenal was unbelievable. So then when I went to Rochdale, they weren't as good technically as what I've been used to. So I could I could have played. Was anywhere, it something really. that like because you've been used to such a high level of like training, especially with Wenger and everyone, that when you come down to that level, you sort of thought, was there a part of you that was like maybe I could teach these boys a, a little bit? bit but I was still young. I, I was like 21, 22, and the boys that were there, I say boys, they were men. They were they were like they were like 30, 25, some are even like, like 35, and they bets. were like. They weren't good technically, but in that league, League Two, is, you know, it's the same now. Everyone's physical. I was like small and skinny. Mm. It was all like proper men. So, I, do you know what I mean, I was a lot. You might you managed to but... fair enough. You held your own. Yes. But like, so after the loan at Rochdale, then like, where'd you go from there? Uh, I went. I, I, do you know what? It sounds like, like stupid, really, but I just left. I was like, I can't deal with this no more. I was like homesick. Come back local, and then I went to Grays. They was in the conference. Was that on loan as well? No, nah, I just uh, went there like on trial for mm-hmm. them, and they wanted me to sign. I was like, no, nah, I don't really like it here. And then I went to, um, I played a few games for Dartford. They was in like the conference as well. Uh, well in, I've had like a couple of games here and there, and then I sort of, I didn't, didn't really know what to do. Like a few offers and that, and I was like, ah. and then uh, just to keep fit, I was going to my local team VCD, which are in the, this in league this now. Yeah. Um, where my brother is literally around the corner from my house. So I went down there, a few of my mates were there. And yeah, I just I felt like Messi playing. Like, <laughs> and, like, yeah, and I sort of got stuck there. Um, that's it. Really. I no, no regrets. You know what I mean? I, no regrets. I, yeah, I've met some all my ninety percent of my mates all through football. So you know, people say it's stupid. Man, you know, when you went on loan to Rochdale, did you have that mindset? Like you know, like you, you look at it from nowadays, where people get players get sent out on loan to impress. To game works famous. Did you see like that in terms of like the people at Arsenal will see me play, they monitor me, just, they'll obviously keep tabs on me. Maybe I can get a book a, a little, a little bit. Um, I think you sort of know like when you get sent to someone like that, they're, they're sort of just want to get rid of you, basically. They want to get. Yeah. Rid of you. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not being. They're, they're trying to do you a favour to get you to another club. Because obviously you've got Ashley you know, Cole. That, the number one, yeah, you've got no Police chance, and then you've, got, you've got other people you might that are get trying a to get a game if someone did yeah, yeah, you never, yeah, and it was like you only had a year contract, so after that, you sort of know that, that that's sort of it at Arsenal. And then, mm. like, what was it like being can, around Wenger? It's quite casual, with laid back, didn't really talk much. Um, I always had a guy who's quite a serious person. Yeah, he's serious, but he's he quite laid back, like, he, he put on the session, but he never really used to get involved. He used to like Don Al and Pat Rice and all them used to do it's most of it. a bit like it. Fergie used to do with like yeah. Nick Feeling and, and he Kuros. used to like dig people out every now and then have a chat with them um, stuff like that but it, them sort of players the, the session sort of run itself they set it up and they just all you know they, they you like, know from all the players that you've been around um, I'm not going to mention what but you are like Arsenal basically who's the one player that not you look forward to coming to training every day but like you want to learn off a lot in not um, from position person, because like from position it's actually player, cool, isn't it? Yeah. But um, not from a position, but like overall. There's loads, really. Um, the, the one that springs to mind who's unbelievable, like training off the pitch, just loved it. Say that uh, Steve Sidwell. Mm. You, you know, yeah. Yeah, Steve Steve Sidwell. Yeah. yeah. He he was a couple of years older than me, and he was he was unbelievable. He used to get there like three hours early in the morning. Starts at like half ten training. He used to be there at like, half six. <laughs> Um, after the, like, proper man. like serious and trying to like learn even though he was young as well he was trying to like teach everyone and he's done well and people like that David Bentley was up there mm. he was a uh, nickname game the next day with Beckham wasn't it yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah. yeah he played yeah. for England and, that, and he just he's got a banger in the yeah. North London derby he, I, around I, I used to go to school with him he was at the Hans part of us as well mm. so I was every day I was training with him 
he was unbelievable. He was probably the best in training out of my sort of age. Yeah. Um, but didn't really take it serious. What's the, the academy set up like? Because like obviously you go through. I'm gonna assume it's ruthless, and um, for a kid like 13, like getting told, oh no, it, like that can break someone. It is hard. Yeah. Like, you, you get like? um, you get well obviously you get two years, so your team they don't really get other people in or let you go in that two years. So it's like us, our team's our team. Do you know what I mean? You don't, you don't. So like get, get, essentially like, like a school year. Yeah, together for two yeah, years. yeah, you don't, you don't get players coming in and out. It's just, they're your, that's your team and that's it. Do you okay. know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, but like you say, at the end of it, it's either you get, literally get pulled into a room and they say, right, you're released or we want to, we've got you a loan move or like, that's it, you're done, go or we, we think you can go on and you'll get a pro or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Well, There's when, not many make it out of the whole academy. Probably about three out of twenty boys get that like, pro. Were you there when Wilshire and them up with that? Nah, he was a lot younger. Oh, they're he's, younger, um, aren't they? Yeah, Wilshire. Yeah. From was, a mindset point of view, though, like as a youth player coming up, being in that squad, getting loaned out again and stuff. From a mindset, like it, the way I'm looking at it is, what's my next step in football? How was it? Um, I just was happy to play like it's a big step from I was only like 21 I was playing in men's league 2 football against the, like we went through to the Carling Cup against Wolves like, I played like I think that was in the Prem then at, at Rochdale's ground it was on, it was all on Sky I was next to Paul Ince in the tunnel he had oh. his top off I'm like this like little kid <laughs> um, he scored a banger as well that game um, did you get past you? No, I think I um, I ran into him and he fell over. He dived a bit, and uh, the commentator said, uh, I, "I said to him, get on the weights, so like messing around and run off." The commentator said, oh, he's used a lot of experience to go down there and all this, and then he just got up, and just bang on top corner." But mm-hmm. yeah, we lost four or two in the end. But things like that, I was just I was just happy to play in the league. Do you know what I mean? There, there was like thousands of people watching every week, home and away. Yeah, so just what's it like? So obviously, you made that decision to leave Arsenal. Um, obviously, was that? Do you consult your family at that age as well, or they was just happy that what I was doing? Or was it like, look, as long as you're happy, we're yeah, happy. Yeah, they, they was fine. Like they was, they said, just yeah, do what you want. Like you, you probably think they're stupid, say so like drumming it into me, but they was, they was fine. Just, it's life's too short to do something you don't want to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you get foot like loads of footballers just playing for not like money in it they're not enjoying it they're just yeah, there to, for money you know what i mean you yeah. just got to be happy I, that's what i thought mad or not but i enjoyed it and still enjoy yeah, it so myself. you're essentially you're doing it for the love of the game and i mean yeah. you're still here now you're down at punjab now i'd rather i'd rather be in it sounds weird but my wife's at arsenal today i mean she's in a box she's sitting there watching that and i'd rather be here than <laughs> go there. So I you've sent the wife and kids in a box yeah, to they're, Arsenal and you're like, there, yeah. I'm going to stay at Fudge for the day. Yeah, wow. that's just, that's just non-league football, isn't it? You just get used to it and I've played in this sort of level for years now. So, obviously, you know, I mean, from what we've sort of gathered coming here over the last few months, you've sort of stepped back a bit from playing. You yeah, seem I'm, a bit more involved in the coaching side. I do all the coaching here yeah, for the first team, um, enjoying it. We've got some good boys here, it's really good at it. You've seen how the club's stepped up, um, great place to be. Um, I, yeah, I just do the coaching now and Chippy knows if, if he needs me or I can play or whatever. Like the other night I was starting because someone was late, but he turned up in the end. But I would have been fine, do you know what I mean? I ain't played all season, but if you talk to people that know me, I don't, I don't need minutes, do you know what I mean? I, I, if I play now, in, if I, if I played another two years' time, I'll still play exactly the same. Like, I keep myself fit in that, do you know what I mean, out of football, so... Is what and it long is. I'm term, really... are, you, are you looking to go coaching? Or... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, not like proper serious, like non-league is fine for me, I don't, don't really want to go up. Oh, you know? yeah. See, I had a question, I had a conversation with someone last night, you remember what Rudy said. Uh, Coach Rudy, he was at the awards as well. Um, and he said to us about grassroots, saying that people that are in grassroots, are they're invested in it. There's a love there because obviously when you get into the higher levels of the championship, it becomes almost elitist and it's like business for yeah. more than love, yeah. And like Rudy was talking about, like he's at the level he's at because he loves what he does. He'd rather do that than go higher up 
and lose not the enjoy love it. of the game. That's what I mean. That's what I said earlier. You, you know, you've got to be happy. What's the point of like coaching at League One late in Orient or something like that, getting a bit of money and just being there for you're not happy, you know what I mean? Like Do you think it's more the more higher higher up you go, the more politics is involved? Yeah, it's it's tougher, yeah. You, yeah. You, a lot more obviously it's your full time job when you go that high so you've got more time to prep mm. and stuff for like as a coach you you got all morning to set up stuff here's sort of you're in you don't know how many is going to turn up on the Tuesday night you, you could get you could get five players or you could get 15 so it's a bit like off so the in cup. essence you've got like the pressure's different in a way like yours is like obviously at this level it's a bit more on the fly that's yeah. why the sort of, there's that level of pressure of like okay I've got an out change what I planned for 15 and do it for 10 yeah whereas at the, the bigger levels it's the pressure it on set because out. yeah we've got to perform we've got to hit promotion or yeah, exactly you know or that, I'm getting yeah. fired yeah it's exactly that yeah but it's you know you still got to put on a good session here like boys are traveling an hour hour and a half to come here on a Tuesday night if they come here and you just stand around and just Volley balls over the fence and things like that. They go home and they think, I ain't got nothing out of it. What's like, it's a bit boring. Like, what's the point of me traveling all that way for nothing? So, you need to make it enjoyable as well and go through stuff that you want to do on Saturdays. Do you know what I mean? So, you got so this to, journey, yeah. Punjab on with Chippy, how did it start? Did he come to you? You approached him? Uh, I was playing in, I, was like, uh, I think I was at VCD, yeah. They was in the league above Punjab um, and it was like a Tuesday night and one of our friends, Pally, who's down here, you know, and he um he was Chippy's mate and he said, Chippy went, have you got a player to help me out on the Tuesday night? Because um, we're short. So I, I went, yeah, I'll do it. Like, I'd go down there, I think it was like way to Tunbridge Wells or something. I didn't know anyone, so I turned up, um, played. I think I scored as well that game. We won. Scored on his debut? I think they, um, play? <laughs> they didn't win a game for like 15 games. A lot of point think, up. Yeah, and then me and Jack Barry, our centre-back, he's yeah. here today, we went down there to help him out. And we won, um, we won two one. I scored. Um, yeah, it was a good so game. Yeah. You're, you're the reason Punjab turned around. Yeah, yeah exactly. That. <laughs> the yeah, Ashley nah, Province. Nah, so yeah, such a good um, that was it really. And then um, that was near the end of the season three years ago. And then he said, "Do you want to just come down full time and sign?" And then that was it. it was stuck, stuck forever. So it's good. Is that it? Yeah. Is that Punjab now? Is yeah, that it? yeah. I, I'm not going nowhere. Do you know what I mean? That's, See what happens there, yeah, yeah. It's all good. So let me hit you with a hypothetical. Arteta rings you. Oh, God. Yeah. Ashley, I need you to coach the under-18s. The only reason why I'd go back there, if he said, listen, no, nah, I know all them, like, they're all my mates, all them, like, Adam Virtual now, they're full-time there, they're proper, unbelievable coaches and that. That would never happen, but, yeah, I probably would. You'd do it? Yeah. And, I mean, speaking to you, I know you'd love it. And I mean, I've seen some is of the Is that because of Arsenal, it, like, the team you support, or is it something else? Because we had a chat with, uh, you know, staff, Arsenal's doctor. Oh, yeah. We obviously had him on the uh, pod as well and stuff, and he's a Liverpool fan, originally from Rochdale. Yeah. He went from Spurs to Liverpool. Yeah. Um, and then Palace and then... When he got approached by Liverpool, obviously he was applying for jobs and stuff like that. He entered by Liverpool, but his family was in London, so he was travelling back and forth every day. Oh, yeah. Not every day, but like obviously every other yeah, week and yeah. stuff. And he chose to leave to go to Palace, basically, only because to be near family. Okay. Now, he goes even that was still, from north to south London. It's a long way. Yeah. One of the best things was just to work for Liverpool, the team you sport. But when it comes to family and etc. and stuff, the best move was to move back to Palace uh, in yeah. lovely North London and stuff like that. Not North London, but South London. Yeah. Um, and he goes obviously like now, wherever he goes, like even when he's at, he was like, I'm at Arsenal. When we play at Liverpool, I'm an Arsenal fan. Like yeah. that kind of fun side to it, yeah. it goes out the window because who you work for, who you, um, basically, that's what it is. Basically. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's normal. Do you yeah. mean, it's not yeah. just uh, you're, you're trading your own team I mean, and still you know that from working at United and working yeah. at Liverpool like but, you're a United fan that had to work for Liverpool yeah, but sometimes it's part of the job you do what you do it's part of the job you have to sometimes isn't it? so. so that because it it struck me most when you said like your family are all Charlton fans so I'm like hang on a minute, that's like he's gone the complete opposite way yeah, but yeah, it's a long way but I sort of 
not forced, but that's the only option I had at that time. Like it was either go with what Arsenal recommended or try and find my own club at that age. Obviously, if you've got that guidance from Premier yeah, League winners, why not? There was League Two, they were, Rochdale was a solid club. Um, stadium was all right, as you know. It's not bad. Yeah, it's all right. It's not, yeah, it's not no Man United, but it was, yeah, it was a proper Listen, proper all trap is a shit all at the minute. Yeah. But yeah, no, nah, so yeah, I enjoyed it when I first got there, but then it got a bit too much, as you know. So all this like going on loan and that, just from like a football point of view, is that how does that work in terms of the real life aspects? So I'm talking like living arrangement, is it renting, is it like uh, no, they put me up um in like um they basically paid for a uh, like flat. Um and it, it was it was actually in Manchester, and I, I got lucky. I was overlooking Old Trafford, one of them massive. Like, Dean's Gate side, basically. Yeah, yeah, Dean's Gate. Is it Dean's Gate Locks? Yeah, like, Dean's yeah. Gate. One of them. So I was in there, and uh, there was two of us in there. Ernie Cooksey, remember him? I've heard him. He used to play for Oldham and that, but he, rings um, a bell, yeah. he, had, he died, like, yeah, a few years back. He died of cancer and fucking, yeah, it was gutted. Um, he was a top bloke. I used to live with him. In, um, one so of he was flats. at Rochdale and you were at Old. No, sorry. No, no, no. You were at no, at, was at, at no, no, I was at um, Rochdale and he was at Oldham. Yeah. But Rochdale signed him. But I knew him because he lived around our way. So he come over to Rochdale and then we shared the flat. Oh. Um, but then when I left, he stayed there. I think he was there for another couple of years. And yeah, he was a good player. You can see, like, the way I'm looking at it in my head, I'm thinking, if you're doing tenancy agreements every year, and, like, no, they, you've got they, to um, they like, pay for all that. extra stress. But if they're sorting it, yeah, they obviously they, um, they pay for all the, the, like, the flat and everything like that. So the, the money we used to get was just for us. Like that age, it was good. You know? Did you go back to Russia? Uh, not. For what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what to look around or? <laughs> uh, trust me, there's nothing to look around. That. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Like so, after training, like we used to finish at like one in the afternoon. We like. Like looking around, like what do we do now then? Like we can't, like we're, we're footballers, we ain't gonna go pub, we ain't gonna. So we just used to go and play snooker, or just go back to the flat and chill out and just walk around and it's mad, isn't it? You know, so from where you are now, when if you look back to what you've been through and stuff, what's it taught you? As, like obviously now you're probably like, like a coach for Punjab, so what's it taught you? What experience can you bring from that over to here? Um maybe um, choose well not choose wisely because I was sort of forced there but maybe like when I was not enjoying it there maybe um, got a local club rung them and said look I'm here can I come on can I like swap like come back to Leighton Orient where I live same sort of league or league below whatever you know what I mean don't just, just basically not give yeah. up well at that age as well moving away from home and I'm presuming you yeah, moved on your hard, own yeah yeah Oh, well, yeah, no, I was living down here, obviously, my mum and dad. And, yeah, but then when you went on loan, was it just you that went? Or? Yeah, I was on my own, yeah. yeah. So, that's gonna so be it was bit. difficult. Um, but looking back, really, I should have gone, you know, I'll come back local and find a, a club in league football, not just sort of go, right, I'm not doing that, and then go and play with my mates. Like, yeah, you know see, I mean? hearing that, have you seen the Phil Jones interview recently? No. Phil Jones, I, do you remember who did the podcast for? Um, not, I can't remember. And you know what? I really apologise to the guy who did the podcast. It, I think it's from high high performance or something, possibly. And yeah. then Phil Jones said someone said to him, "Oh, shame about your career or something." Dalton Hag. How is it? Like when he saw apparently the way he's worded it is, like Ten Hag's come. Um, obviously due to his injury, um, from what I've gathered is like. So he's not mentioned the names. Yeah, because he what? said someone yeah, yeah. said to me. Yeah. It's a bit harsh. Yeah. Yeah. That shame about your career. And he turned around and went, what are you on about? I've played over 100 games yeah, for United. He's, he's had a good career. I've won a Premier League. I've won this. I've won the Europa League. I've been to two World Cups. Yeah, injuries happen. And like, I mean, he gets a lot of stick from our fans. But to me, when Ed Woodward or whoever puts that contract in front of you and you've got a wife and kids at home, yeah, exactly. you secure the bag. Yeah, you look after your family. Yeah. And like, in a way, I was like, you know what? He's done all right. And like, even you at this level, like, obviously you've been through the ranks. And yeah, you've not got the accolades that a Phil Jones has got. Yeah, exactly. and probably not got the money he's got. I don't know. But 
you've got the knowledge, you've got the experience, and I mean, you're content within yourself, and I think that's the most important thing. I have no regrets. Ever. Like people say, some people like friends and that, you're mad. Like you could have, what have done this and this. You could have been the next Ashley Cole. <laughs> yeah, 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 like it don't matter. You know. You ever trained with him? Yeah. Like one v one. A few times, yeah. I've, I've, all of them boys, like. What was, was he like in training? Was he a bit? Exactly the same. Sharp, aggressive. Like so I was really... telling someone here the other day, we had a training session against the first team. So like, like a pitch like this, 11 v 11, and the first team had a corner and they was going through their set plays and all that. And I was at the back with another one of my mates like in our team, and Omri was, we was marking Omri like. Oh God. So the ball, the ball got cleared and he went to him. I think he scooped one over like that. He just run like you know like what he does. Just, just running and slot in the corner. And um, who was it? Uh, Neil Bamford or Don Al, one of them, that like, our coach was shouting, Are hey, you the wrong side? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's Thierry like, on me, what are yeah, you going to do? So, like, things like that. You said no, no regrets. If there's one thing you could change, though, from your, from then, what would it be? Uh, well, Arsenal, when I went to Rochdale. Well, like, just in your, like, your entire Arsenal career, regret. what yeah, you could like change? Yeah, like I said, just a little while ago, like, maybe come back, like, on a loan to someone near home, do you know what I mean? Mm. Instead of just like going to play with my mates. <laughs> but yeah, so I was I thinking you've got to do what keeps you happy though, I suppose, yeah, right? And exactly. Obviously if you're not happy on the other side of the country, like you may as well, yeah. you know, come back down and But it's an experience at the end of the day, you know, if you don't do it, like you're not gonna learn. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, you've learnt from it. The thing is I was sort of like a lot of these people some well half of the people out there like I was lucky I had a good family like and they had and that sounds weird they had good businesses so I, was, I used to go work with my dad and stuff and some people ain't got that so they have so what to were you do doing outside of football like uh, work I was working for my he owns he's got a few tile shops so I was in there and, like just helping him out and doing football on the side like non-league and stuff like bathrooms that. and that and yeah then. but what I'm saying is if if, it, if they didn't have that I would have had to stick to football because that's do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't out. have been able to do yeah. anything else, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, things change it from day to day, don't they? So. And what was it like as a kid? Because I'm assuming to get picked up by Arsenal, you've got to stand out. You've got to be like, if an Arsenal scout turns up at Sunday League, you've got to be the one percent of the one percent. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'd like to think, well, it, yeah, I was, I was the best out of the group that we was with. Like Kieran Richardson was my age, um, and, oh. and he was um, he was at Sammy Montagu, another local team to us. So it was like me and him was the the big thing around the, the area. Do you know what I mean? Like the the group of people. Yeah, so he went to that. You went to Arsenal. Went there. I think yeah. he was at West Ham when he for a bit first, and then he went to United. Yeah, West Ham. Okay, but, yeah, yeah, I used to have a, I used to be friends with him. Like I had good battles with him over the years. Like as a kid. But yeah, so. And when you look at Punjab and the lads you've got here, like, obviously, you're a defender by trade. So I'm going to use the example of Chris Smalling. Yeah. Obviously, come from lower league, ends up at United, Maidstone to United to obviously Roma now. Is there a Chris Smalling in this team that one day you could see in the higher levels? Yes. Um, like, is there a potential there? Well, you you tell me. What do you think of Hudson? What do you <laughs> yeah. think of Hudson? Hudson? Hudson's the boy. He he's, is. He's playing today, and you watch. He, really? This season, he's he's um he's been good. Um, how old is he? Nineteen, twenty. He's yeah, twenty. Think, yeah. Hopefully, he can just learn. Like we're teaching him stuff, and hopefully, he gets better and better. And I think every game he plays is getting better. And you see today, the last game, he, he's good. Um, I mean, last time we were here, he scored a banger. Yeah. And and hopefully. hopefully <laughs> If he wants it, he can, he can get it. Do you know what I mean? Some, there's always people out watching, do you know what I mean? He can see what happens. Speaking about the boys, though, um, they're going to come out here and warm up in a bit with what you've set up behind you. Yeah. Um, is this your own drill or are you leading the training, like the warm-ups and yeah, stuff? Yeah, I do the warm-up. I join in with them as well, so I'm on the bench today. But, yeah, this is my setup. We do every, um, we do every uh, game. Um, do a bit of, like, uh, passing like stretch like stretching here first and then we go into uh, big keep ball and then we do more stretching and we go on the pitch and we get in our positions and we do like midfield out wide crosses finishes bit of shooting 
go in, Chippy talks for about five minutes and then we're ready. And then that's it. Tell the truth. When Chippy's giving that team talk, are you in the zone and like, like we're going to play a game or are you locked in listening to Chippy? Like, or does it depend so on the game? Me or everyone. Like you, you specific. I'm not, I'll ask uh, the rest of the boys. Yeah. Chippy, um, he knows what he's doing. He's been doing it for like, so like, Is there now. some games where you're like, we know this is a big game, like we're just zoned in? Yeah, everyone's sort of focused. Like, it's, it's what it is. Put the music on. Never, you know, you can't take this too serious. Yeah. It's, it's non-league football, you know. Yeah. You know what it's like in there. Everyone yeah. sort of messes, not messes around, but you have a laugh and it's all part of There's it. There's a real like, passion, yeah, which is, I think yeah, that's the I important think, part. Like, I think when... You get people in sometimes and you can tell straight away they're, they're not interested in this club. Like They just come here, just want to play and go home, do you know what I mean? But you, they, after a few weeks you find them out and then you can chip your nose and then they just go, do you know what I mean? That's why you have to keep the right people, do you know what I mean? And I think at the moment we've, our whole squad is, is all part of it, do you know what I mean? No one's moaning, no one's, it's, it's good. But you, you get the downs, you have rows and stuff, that's all part of football. A couple of weeks ago, everyone was shouting at each other, but then after, we're down the bar, everyone has a beer, and then it's done with, and then we're done. So we've got a game. I think you just move on to the next one. Yeah, we've got this today, and then Tuesday night, we've got another league game, so we need to get this done, and then focus on Tuesday. So, so this, like, match day-wise, it's a busy, busier schedule than being in, say, League Two. Because um, essentially, you're only training two days a week. Potentially, one of them could turn into a match day. Yeah, Whereas, it's similar really. Like they, they have midweek games as well, didn't they? Like cup games. But they're stuff. training every day, aren't they? Yeah. With the exception not, of like yeah, that they have like if they have a game on the Tuesday, they'll be off on the Wednesday. And then they do a little like bit on the Thursday and Friday, but not too much an hour of like, stretching and sometimes or um, it's a little bit different here. Like if we play on Tuesday, we probably won't come in Thursday. So we have the weekend, like the whole rest of the week off, and then we'll go back Saturday. But then if we have a game on a Saturday, we'll probably train Tuesday, Thursday. Not so much hard. On on the Tuesday, you do a bit of hard work. And then the Thursday, you do more a bit of like shooting or patterns or plays and stuff. Yeah, and that. try and keep everyone fit. Yeah, try and so. avoid any unnecessary risks. Yeah. But you never know what happens. Like today, hopefully not, but there might be three boys that are injured. And then you're not going to... Um, Choose if we didn't have a game choose, it'd be hard to train because there's not a lot of people here. Do you know what I mean? So then we might sometimes go power wave down around the corner. It's like, um, you know what power wave is? It's like, you know, oh, the big bags, the heavy bags, yeah, and you do all like squats and there's like people that do it for you. So it's a bit of hard work. Or we go to the boxing gym on the Tuesday, a bit oh, of I've like seen hard videos. Draft. yeah, so the Chippy's personal trainer. That's it, yeah, <laughs> get down there, yeah. Well, Ash, thank you very much. Thank you, boys. Thank um, you. um yeah, we'll get, we'll obviously we'll stay, we'll get a bit of footage of the training. Come out and warm up. Yeah, we'll have a go at this. We'll get Chippy to have a go at this. And this yeah. Is